penguins versus mirror. Are these birds aware of themselves? Self-awareness is one of the traits we think is unique to humans, or at least as high a level of it as our species. But are we so isolated in this respect? Some animals seem to be aware of themselves to some extent. So far, the only animals that have passed the test, considered by behaviorists as a benchmark for higher level cognitive abilities, are mammals, several species of monkeys, elephants, pigs, dolphins, killer whales and birds from the corvid family, but also pigeons. In 2018, a tiny fish joined this noble group, the sanitary wrasse. Penguins have the potential to be self-aware in a new study. The description and results of the research, which have not yet passed the review process, have been published in the BioRxiv preprint database. Sometimes some inconspicuous animals can surprise us with their abilities. Therefore, it is not surprising that three scientists from India decided to take a closer look at penguins. Their research indicates that penguins may be one of those animals that is aware of itself. At least to some extent. This is specifically about the white-eyed penguins living in Antarctica, also called Adelie penguins. In general, this remarkable property, self-awareness, is quite rare among animals. At least that's what the research so far shows. To some extent, only a few species exhibit behaviors that indicate this. It is also quite a big problem to find it in animals. While in the case of humans it is extremely simple, even obvious, in relation to animals, quite unconventional methods should be used. One of them is the so-called mirror test. It was with the help of the mirror test that scientists decided to test the level of self-awareness in penguins. The test included four phases. In the first, a series of mirrors were simply placed near the penguins and their reactions were observed. In the other, a kind of cardboard corridor was built, at the end of which the penguins encountered a mirror. In the third trial, Stickers were placed on the mirrors to mislead the penguins when they looked at him, suggesting that the stickers were actually on themselves. In the final test, bibs were placed on random penguins and their reaction to seeing themselves in a mirror was observed. The concept of the mirror test is quite simple. It's about placing a mark on the body of the selected animal, which it can't see without the help of a mirror. For example, a dot on the forehead. If, after setting a mirror in front of an individual, he starts to be interested in a dot on his forehead, it means that he recognizes himself in the mirror. The mirror test is a method of testing self-awareness. It was first performed on chimpanzees in the 1970s. A group of chimpanzees, who had never seen a mirror before, initially took their reflection as a threat. After some time, the chimpanzees realized that they were seeing reflections of themselves in the mirror. A positive test result is the recognition by a specific animal of its reflection in the mirror, and not treating it as another creature. Such a change in behavior reflects a certain self-awareness, a mental model of one's own body as opposed to friends, enemies or other parts of the environment. On average, children can pass the mirror test after 18 months. In the penguin study, the authors slightly modified the test and added several variants. Animal observations showed that in the case of the first test, there was no reaction from the penguins, which, contrary to appearances, also provides some information. Many animals in such a situation, looking in the mirror, simply think that they are dealing with another representative of their species, and react accordingly. In the second case, the penguins behaved in a way that seemed to indicate that they were looking at themselves in a mirror. They were particularly active in the context of stickers, which they even tried to remove.
Interestingly, they did not react at all in the last test. To sum up, on the one hand, the results obtained are not fully unambiguous, but on the other hand, they partly indicate that penguins seem to be self-aware to some extent. Researchers have created fish with the alligator gene. A team of scientists from Auburn University used the CRISPR gene editing technique to introduce the alligator gene into fish. The added gene plays a role in the innate immune response, making breeding catfish more resistant and protecting them against a variety of pathogens, including bacteria and viruses. A group of researchers used the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system to introduce a special gene to farmed catfish that helps alligators fight infection. Catfish is a prized delicacy in many parts of the world, which is why it is in high demand. This situation favors the creation of water farms where these fish are bred, but their productivity is low. All because of the high infection rate. Currently, only about 55% survive on farms. Farmed fish populations. The results and description of the research were published in an article in the preprint database, BioRxiv. Improving the efficiency of catfish farms would significantly increase the profits from breeding. Therefore, scientists decided to tackle the problem. They looked for help in alligators, specifically in their genome. We know from previous research that alligators have a special gene that codes for a protein called catholicidin. This important protein has primarily protective functions. It is a natural antibiotic and kills a wide range of microbes. Alligators need catholicidin, among other things, to fight off infections from wounds they incur during fights with other members of their species. A team from Alabama set out to see what happens when a gene from alligators is added to fish. To find out, the researchers used CRISPR-Cas9, a genetic engineering method that allows the manipulation of the genome of organisms. They inserted the alligator gene into the catfish's genome, where the fish reproduce. In this way, the catfish became sterile which prevents them from reproducing in the wild if one of them escaped from its enclosure, as this could have serious consequences. Tests have confirmed the effectiveness of this protective method. The modified catfish had a survival rate of up to 400%, higher than fish without changes in the genome. However, Further testing is needed to see if other undesirable changes occur in the catfish as a result of the manipulation of the genome. It may also prove difficult to convince consumers to accept genetically modified catfish on their tables. Ants can detect cancer. Cancer cells release characteristic chemicals that often appear in body fluids such as sweat and urine. These compounds have a specific smell that can be detected by ants. In a new study, scientists trained dozens of ants to use their olfactory receptors to detect cancerous tumors. I think we all agree that broadly understood cancer diagnosis has been, is and will continue to be one of the priorities of modern medicine. It is possible that we will soon gain a rather unexpected ally in this context. And it is the most common insects, ants. Ants do not have a nose, but thanks to the olfactory receptors located on their antennae, they have an amazing sense of smell. In the study, published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B, Biological Sciences, the researchers found that it was possible to train the Formica fusca ants to use their olfactory receptors to detect tumors. Researchers from Université Sorbonne Paris Nord, Université Paris Saclay and Institut Universitaire de France conducted studies on the ability of ants to identify odors associated with cancer cells. 
so far. The tests have only concerned the detection of tumors in mice, but it cannot be ruled out that this research will go beyond this sphere. But what were these trials? Researchers have successfully trained ants to respond to chemicals in urine that are linked to cancer. We should know that these small insects have a sensational sense of smell. As for the cancers themselves, both human and animal cancers produce specific chemicals. They can then get into the urine and out of the body with it. And there, in turn, through their characteristic smell, they can be detected by various animals. Some dogs are the best example of this. Now ants have also joined this group. But how exactly did the scientists manage to train the ants to pay attention to a specific odor associated with cancer? First of all, they decided to accustom the ants to the fact that recognizing such a smell is associated with receiving a reward in the form of a sugar solution. Behind the Petri dish, an empty cylinder was placed on one side and some distilled water in front of it, while the opposite cylinder already contained the smell associated with cancer, in front of which a sweet solution was placed. They then tested what the ants had learned by removing any rewards and adding another empty cylinder and a urine-scented cylinder of, for example, healthy mice. In fact, the ants learned quite quickly to distinguish the odor associated with cancer from other odors. What's more, they spent no more than 10 minutes on it. In the next phase of the research, mice were transplanted with human breast cancer cells, and once the cells had started to develop, it was tested again whether the ants would be able to smell them. And another success. The ants spent an average of 20% more time with urine samples from these mice. So the only thing left to study, and it is already planned, is whether the ants will be as effective at analyzing the smell of human urine.